Good morning everyone. It's Jelani. The morning scripture came from Hebrews chapter 12 verses 1 to 6. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to give you thanks for another day of life. And dear Lord, as always, I thank you for all that you have done for us in our lives, for keeping us safe from all harm and evil, and for protecting us in those times when evil try to come against us. We just pray that you continue to help us to stay in the shadow of your wing, to say, stay in your safety, to stay in your protection, dear Lord, so that we are not taken over or taken away by the evil one because we know that the devil is trying his best in each and every one of our lives to to rend us to take us away from serving you the one true god through our lord jesus christ and for this dear lord i pray that we are not ignorant to this nor that we forget to know that we are in a battle because ultimately we are in this battle for the duration of our lifetime and if we forget at any one time, then the enemy can take us captive and he can take us away in, in, in folly and in sin. So dear Lord, I just pray for your protection today for each and every one of us. Clear our hearts and our minds. Clear our souls and our bodies, dear Lord. Cleanse us from all sin. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Cleanse our thoughts from those things that are not pure by the washing of your word and we ought to have a good vest our interests are vested in your word dear lord we have to be in your word so that our minds can be vested our minds can be wholly encompassed in thinking about what you have said and what you have told us to do because we know that this is good this is righteous and we know that anytime we set our minds on anything else outside of you, this is going to lead unto destruction, unto damnation, unto sin, and unto death. So dear Lord, we pray for life this morning. Thank you for helping us in our situation so that we can do it and come out of it in love, dear Lord, as you have shown us. Because you have loved us even when we were in our folly, in our sin, you have shown that you have loved us in so much that you have given over yourself your natural life. You have shed your blood for our sake so that we can have eternal life through you. And this we do not take for granted. We do not want to continue in sin, but we want to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, by the Spirit of God, even the Holy Spirit, which you have given unto all those who love you. And we only can love you if we abide and do what you have told us to do and we only can do what we, you told us to do if we believe on you and what you have said by your holy word so lord jesus i pray that you help us in all these things continue to help our children keep them safe continue to help us to help each other in love in brother and sisterly love that you bear us up dear lord to help each other in the times of need. I thank you for all things. Help us as always this morning to know what you have given us by your word so that we can be edified by it. Pray, Lord, we just pray for your guidance today also. Lead us in spirit and in truth. Help our brothers and sisters in the faith, those who are going through persecution. And help us to help our young ones to be led in the way of truth by your Holy Spirit. To the glory of God our Heavenly Father. Through you, by you, and for you, Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Alright, so the morning scripture this morning came from Hebrews chapter 12 verses 1 to 6. So it says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, 
looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinful sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin, and ye have for, and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children, my son, despise not the chastising or chastening, sorry. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Right? Cool. Um, so this morning we're going to be looking at, we're going to look at the example of Christ Jesus, right? Some of the examples that he has shown us in this life and which he has given unto us. Right. Um. This the the chapter there starts off and say we are we are surrounded by a great cloud of witness. So the the author there was speaking about the company that he was in the midst of, which was the church, which is the body of Christ. Those who witness of his love, of his spirit, and of his word. Right. Um. So yeah, let us lay aside every weight and sin which does easily beset us. And when the Lord said to lay aside every weight, right? Weight, what brings us weight and um, keeps us down in this life is sin, right? And it does say every weight and the sin which does easily beset us. Because as long as we're living in perpetual sin, as long as we're continuing in those sins and those things which are ungodly, these are going to be a burden on our soul, right? Even if we, we sear our conscience, even if we try to ignore it, this is what is going to be that heavy burden on our souls, right? And on our minds. And um, we only can do away with these things if we give it, we, we, first of all, we cast it away. We take, if you have burden, imagine you're walking around with a, um, a heavy weight on your back, just on your back, right? First of all, what you want to do, if you want to have less burden, you would have to cut off those those burdens, right? And that is meaning to turn away and to cut off the sins that easily beset us. The sin is what is going to cause us to backslide, to fall, to stumble, and not to be able to accomplish the, the, the race to, to, or to accomplish the goal which we are setting out to accomplish, right? And... um. Yes, when you do cast that, that sin away, we only can do it by the one that is able to, to cast it away from us, right? Because sometimes we might put it down and take it up and put it down and take it up. That is still draining us, right? That sin is still draining us if each and every time we have to be reverting to it. But if we give it to unto the Lord, right? He's able to cast it far from our midst, right? Far away from us. And when he has cast it away, he's also able to help us and to bear us up and to give us the strength to continue in this in the race, right? And if we think of the race as just this journey that we have in this mortal life, in this flesh, we ought to remember that the Lord is, um, is he has done it, right? He has done it. He has accomplished. He's has fulfilled all things. He, have, he has overcome the world, right? And he's able to help. He's literally telling us that just come to me, all those who are weary, right? And he will give us rest. He will give us strength, right? To um, accomplish this race. And as it said, let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And there goes that word again, patience. Because at the end of the day, in our minds, we can't perceive life as how God sees it, right? It really and truly because as the scripture said god sees one day as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day right so this is nothing our life our mortal life is literally like a like a like a blink not even like a blink it's just like you can't consider it like like 
in, in minuscule, so minuscule that is, it's not even incomprehensible to see how swift our mort mortal life is. But in our eyes, we think that we'll, we, we're waiting for eternity, <laughs> even if we wait for a year or not even a year sometimes, just a day or a month or something like that. It seems that we're waiting for eternity from our perception, right? But God knows what's best for us and he's not going to just give us everything that we want at the snap of a finger because he knows what is best and he knows what is, he, he has infinite wisdom to know when is best and what is the best time for everything in our journey in our life right so hence why it says you have to be patient in this thing because the race is not for the swift as it says is is for those who endure until the end right you have to it's a race of endurance so if you're taking one step at a time as long as you're moving in the right direction which is unto holiness through our lord jesus christ then you're, you're doing well right it no makes sense to do a sprint and halfway during the track you faint and drop down and you can't you never finish the race because the the aim of this race is not to to come first this is a finish right and you only can finish if you can endure and you only can endure if you have strength and you only have strength through jesus christ and you have strength in jesus christ if you allow him to clean us and separate us from the sin that easily beset us and weigh us down right because as it says in verse 2 it says looking unto jesus the author and finisher of our faith right so as we know as we just said he is the one that done it he's a blueprint for each and every one of us to do this to accomplish this race this life in righteousness right um and it said who for the joy that was set before him and endured the cross despising the shame and he sat down at the right hand of god of the throne of god right and um he obviously being the son of god according to the flesh the spirit of God would dwell in him, showed him already and knew he knew what his purpose is. He knew where he came from and he knew where he was going, right? He came from heaven, came down to earth and he went back to heaven, right? After he accomplished what he, has, he was set out to do in this mortal life, right? So as I said, he's the author and finisher of our faith. He knew and he endured the cross for our sake. Right, because we know that he was already perfect, right? So if he was taken out in um taken out of this world, uh, translated, it, it would have been well just to be translated and taken up back into heaven. But now nah, he served a purpose in shedding his blood for our sake, so that we can have forgiveness of sins and eternal life. And we see the mercy and grace which God has shown every one of us, because all of us are sinners, and were sinners at one point right and um none of us was justified none of us was righteous in the eyes of god because god is holy right yet because we weren't able to atone for our own sins or pay for our own sins he done it for us by the the descending of the lamb which we know as the son of god which we know as the, our lord jesus right and as i said he despised the shame and it, it, it literally just did what he had to do he was core, he was whipped, he was spit upon, he was um hit, he was he was he literally was um done a lot of shameful things and yet still he endured it because he loved us and he knew that he had to do it for our sake. Right? And then we know that now he has risen, right? He has risen and he's now the, the, he's he's in his in his glory in the glory of god the father right the image of the invisible god right and um verse three there for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself lest he be wearied and faint in your mind so as we just explained that jesus wasn't worthy he wasn't warrant of this payment because he was perfect he wasn't deserving of death. He was the only one that wasn't deserving of death because he did not sin. And we know that the wages of sin is death. He didn't warrant or he wasn't owing of death because he didn't sin at all. Right? But nevertheless, he did it for our sake. That's why it said, consider the contradiction. He wasn't deserving of death, but yet still he died for our sake. 
because we were warranted and he was the only payment that could pay for our our death sentence so that we can have eternal life through him by the grace and by the gift of God through our Lord Jesus Christ right so we need to remember these things because if we think that ah oh, and start thinking too much about it like we are holier than thou and we are not deserving of certain things then we can faint in our own minds but as you've said if we look at Christ and say but wait Christ did everything um against what we we would have thought as right right but he did it for our sake right so we're not supposed to be wearied in those things that we have to be doing in this life because christ suffered more than us anything that we went through christ suffered more and he suffered the ultimate price right and it says in verse 4 then you have we we are ye have not yet resisted unto blood striving against sin so we not really resist unto blood we not resist literally unto death with with, with trying to for, um, forsake sin so we need to humble ourselves and know that yes yeah we'll go through things we'll go through tests we'll go through trials we'll go through all of these things but as we said if we look at that prime example set before us our lord jesus christ we know that we are to be humble in this thing and see the grace of god and the mercy of god which he has given us through and by our lord jesus christ so verse 5 there and he said and ye have for and ye and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son despise not all the chastening, or chastening, sorry, of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. So again, it's just showing you that we shouldn't be weary, we shouldn't faint when the Lord is correcting us from those things which are which we we are doing wrong. He's going to correct us. He's going to be like that that disciplined father. Which is going to correct his children because he knows that they correcting them is leading them into righteousness, right? Likewise, God is the ultimate Father. He's the only, only true Father, the heavenly Father, right? Which um, everything proceeds from. And if He's correcting us, he's, if He's chasing us, if He's disciplining us, it is for our good. It's never for his benefit there's nothing that we can do to to benefit god right so when he does things unto us it's for our benefit and if we take heed and if we listen and we say all right you may get a whipping me now go go down that road again me now go do this again because this never pleased my, my father so we're gonna stop doing it he had to give me a discipline for shape me up and to take me away from that that um that deed or sin what I was doing, but ultimately he is there doing it for our good. And now we acknowledge this and we turn away from those things that are dis displeasing unto our Heavenly Father. Right? So yeah, don't be faint when we are rebuked. Do not despise the chastening, but we humbly, we accept it and we know that this is for the betterment of us. To, to correct us in righteousness and truth right as it said for whom the lord loveth he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth so as he said he would he's gonna chasten he's gonna discipline those who he loves because if he loves us he doesn't want us to error he doesn't want us to go off in sin he doesn't want us to to be um unrighteous he wants us to be children holy children unto him right and um, he's going to do it. And if we're not considered, the if we're not getting chastened, as one scripture said, we are considered bastards. I don't know if it's the same chapter here. But there's one that speaks of if we are not chastened, then we are no children. We are no children of his if we are not chastened, if we are not disciplined by him and we are bastards. And we don't want to be that. Right? So... He said there and he scourges every son whom he receiveth. So if he's receiving you, know that also consider that if he's receiving you, he's going to make you, he's going to purify you, right? And he's going to purify you by disciplining you because we are unruly. <laughs> we are the unruly ones in need of discipline. So if he's going to receive you into his house, into his dwelling, into his camp, into his body, 
is going to have to discipline you and to turn you away because you are unruly and there's no unruliness in him or within his his camp right so he's going to correct you in righteousness and this is done through our lord jesus christ by his word by his spirit and by the, the, the will of God, of what he has set up for each and every one of us in our lives, right? So, yeah, I'll leave it at that this morning. Oh, yes, yeah, this, oh, yeah, by the way, the bastard's thing is in this, is here, yeah, verse 8, right? Um, yeah, I encourage you to read this whole chapter. Um, it's a nice one to remember um, when we go through things. And, um, as always, we know that um, any understanding, anything at all that we, we are lacking, we can always consult the Lord in prayer and he shall give it unto us. So I'll leave it at that this morning, everyone. Send in your questions or anything to the word at eTreachOne.org. And as much as the Lord has led me and taught me and kept me over the years, I will answer them according to his word, according to his principles, according to his will, being led by his Holy Spirit. Right? So... Yeah, we'll leave it at that this morning, everyone. Have a good day and yeah, we'll we'll, we'll catch up tomorrow, God's willing.